Every single year, each NFL team goes through the same cycle after the Super Bowl. It's free agency where you add a bunch of new players to your team, but then there's the NFL draft. And with the NFL draft, it can have a lot of hype surrounding it, especially around first round picks, but around a lot of other picks as well. But with Zay Flowers, there had been a lot of hype surrounding Zay Flowers to the Baltimore Ravens, exactly how he could impact the Baltimore Ravens, what he could do for this team, and, and just how good he could be in Ravens offense. When I watched film on Zay Flowers when they first drafted him, I said, oh man, he reminded me of Antonio Brown. Uh, and he also was moving around a lot in the backfield, and I was thinking, man, they can really use this guy in a lot of different ways. They can move him inside, have him outside. Uh, they could do several things with Zay Flowers in offense. He can be a true weapon. But then there was a lot of hype surrounding him because you start hearing about Zay Flowers in minicamp and OTAs. And there was even a report that came out that said Zay Flowers was looking like the best wide receiver in minicamp. And I was thinking, oh, OK, well, that, that's good. That's a, that's a great thing because it got to start somewhere. But is that a little too much hype for Zay Flowers? Like, let, let, let's chill out now because Odell Beckham Jr., he, he's coming back. He hasn't played football in a year, so he ain't going to be going that hard. Rashad Bateman, he's still dealing with his injury, so he can't really be doing much right now. So Zay Flowers looking like the best rookie in minicamp and OTAs and all that. Is that really saying too much? But then fast forward, we go to when the Ravens start practicing again and they really start training camp. And directly from the Baltimore Ravens, you kept hearing about, oh, man, Zay Flowers looking good. Zay Flowers looking great. Zay Flowers made this play, that play. But then I'm thinking, hold on, no, no, wait a minute. It's from the Baltimore Ravens. So they're not going to really keep it all the way real about their own player because they, they're not going to talk about a player struggling. They ain't going to want to put that out there. They're only going to want to put out positive stuff about the player, not always the real stuff about the player. And I get it. It's their business. So I was like, okay, cool. But then the beat reporters, the beat writers, the ones that cover the Ravens who don't work for the Ravens, the way they talked about Zay Flowers, they said all the same stuff. They just continued to talk about how Zay Flowers made play after play after play after play after play. And I was like, ooh, okay now. So then preseason rolled around. We had heard all this hype about Zay Flowers from minicamp, from OTAs, and from the beginning of the training camp, but then preseason rolled around. And what happened in that game against the Eagles? Zay Flowers, even though... I think he only had like one carry for a couple of yards. We saw how good he can be, and we saw his impact from jump, from jump. While on that, on that, even on that carry, on that carry that he had for a couple of yards, that first defender, <laughs> where'd he go? Zay Flowers made a miss. But then the way that Zay Flowers just frustrated those cornerbacks, got the drew the illegal hands to the face penalty, drew the uh, the defensive holding penalty. Zay Flowers was doing his thing. So I'm like, okay, so we done seen him on every level just be good. And I don't, I don't want to say great yet, but uh, he pushing it for a rookie. So then after that, the joint practices came along. And you think, all right, Ravens done. They, they, they've been practicing alone. They've been practicing against each other. And maybe with Zay Flowers, maybe his own teammates, they don't want to go as hard because that's their teammate and they want him to be successful. So maybe they may, be, they may have been taking it easy on him. No, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, man, because when the Ravens went against the commanders, which they're still doing at this time, Zay Flowers was still doing his thing. So Zay Flowers has consistently continued to make plays and has consistently cooked everybody, everybody that they put in his way. Listen to what Marlon Humphrey had to say about Zay. <laughs> Honestly, the worst part about playing football, this kid right here, man, we be running, running. a lot. Try to guard him. That's that's the worst part right now. That's the worst part right now. That worst part right now. I tell you that much. Now, when you watch that clip, even though Marlon Humphrey he had a little jokiness about him, he wasn't playing. Cause Marlon Humphrey doesn't have to just say that about anybody, especially a rookie wide receiver. Uh, but it's real. It's real. We've heard about Zay Flowers. We heard about him. Remember shaking Roquan Smith? <laughs> we heard about Zay Flowers cooking different Ravens corners and whatnot. And, and Zay Flowers, he seems so hungry. He seems like he really wants it and really wants to get this job done and wants to be a big part of everything that the Ravens do on offense. And by the way, things are starting out. He certainly will be. Zay Flowers can be so dangerous, man.
so dangerous. Something that Lamar Jackson has continued to emphasize and talk about, especially this offseason. I don't remember him speaking about it this much in previous offseasons, but this offseason especially, he's continued to talk about yak. Yards after the catch. That is Zay Flowers' specialty. That's what he will be doing all day, every day. Zay Flowers in open field, like Zay Flowers in open field, and even reminds me of Lamar Jackson in open field. Especially if it's one on one, yeah, you could you could forget about it. You can forget about it because ain't nobody in the open field catching Lamar Jackson, tackling Lamar Jackson, bringing Lamar Jackson down. With Zay Flowers, it's just as bad because the the man is so crazily shifty it doesn't make any sense how shifty he is and Lamar Jackson he gave him the nickname the joystick the joystick and Zay Flowers was like oh well, yeah that's that's that was actually my uh, big brother's nickname too so I just carry it on and just thinking about when, like really think about it think about it now we've talked about this before but you really gotta think about it Odell Beckham Jr who with him He's been looking better and better. We, we will see clips and stuff for him uh, throughout training camp and whatnot. Ravens will show different stuff. And be like, oh, okay, they go Odell. All right, now, okay. But then when we watched the, the practice, when we watched it live against the Washington Commanders, it's, oh, okay, oh, there goes Odell. Oh, all right, now, there he goes. And then when you think about Rashad Bateman, even though he hasn't been practicing in full yet, we remember what he did and just in the connection that him and Lamar had. I, I will never forget. I remember his his rookie year. His rookie year. He had missed a chunk of time. And then when he came back, I was thinking, oh, man, well, I, 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 I can't realistically expect him and Lamar to really have a connection like that. And, and I, I get it. It's cool because he hasn't been playing in a while. So I, I, I respect it. But no, from jump, from jump, from the very first game. Every catch that Rashad Bateman was making, it turned into a first down. And him and Lamar had good chemistry. And then we saw at the beginning of the last year before Rashad Bateman got hurt, we saw that chemistry continue. So Lamar Jackson, he, he has a chemistry with Odell Beckham Jr. Lamar Jackson, he has a chemistry with Rashad Bateman. But what makes this offense even more dangerous is that he's having a connection with Zay Flowers as well. And we ain't even talk about Mark Andrews yet. <laughs> <laughs> he said, hey, get hyped, please buy into the hype because I'm, I'm buying into the Zay Flowers hype now, man. And this this could be such a beautiful thing. And then you saw how happy Lamar Jackson was when KJ got back. And no, I didn't mess up his name. That's what Lamar calls him. He calls J.K. Dobbins KJ. You saw how happy he was when he got back. And now he is back. So. Just imagine, like, really really just sit down. Sit down, because standing up, you may not be able to think straight. You might be crazy like me. But just sit down and think about the possibilities of this Baltimore Ravens offense being healthy, being at full go. Because we've seen Ravens offenses of the past, and they haven't been equipped like this offense of the current. And a lot of them have went off. A lot of them have done well. A lot of them, when the, when the rankings, they come out in the top five, top ten. They do good in scoring and all that. But think, of, think about this offense with these weapons, with these players. Think about it. Because when you really think about it, they, they could definitely be one of the best in the league. For sure. Top ten, yeah, they could be. Top five, yeah, they should be. Top three, yeah, they would be if, as long as they all stay healthy.